Joe, Adam, Travelling Band, how are you? Good, good, thanks. Looking forward to your gig tonight at the Whiskey Sessions. Indeed, yeah, yeah. we've just got to uh, we've just sound checked and uh, we've just got to make sure we don't get too battered before the gig. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, the whiskey's already a flowing, I've seen it. Yeah, there's so. a lot of it around. Uh, if that's just bumped into the rest of the band, they said, is it too early to start drinking? <laughs> I'd say, I'd say so. We, we've, got, we've got a good five hours before we play, so I was wondering whether I could get drunk now, sober up, and then have enough time to do the, the show. It's, it's a risky thing, but, you know, worth a go, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you had a bit of a warm-up for the whiskey, sh- uh, sessions, the whiskey <laughs> sessions. You played at uh, the whiskey shop last Thursday. Um, that was a nice little intimate gig. It was great, yeah, it was, it was really nice. Um, we, we played a couple of songs and then did a whiskey tasting with them, and it was, that was awesome. Now, I'm going to test how much you remember from... Because uh, <laughs> there was a bit of a... Not necessarily a quiz, but, uh, you know, it was asking a few questions, the guy doing the, uh, the whiskey tasting. So, yeah. you ready? Yeah. yeah. Um, which country is the second biggest whiskey producer in the world? Japan. He's got it right. There you go. For the draw now. Okay, which, this one's pretty easy actually. Which state is Jack Daniels from? Tennessee. Kentucky. Tennessee. Yeah, oh, no, yeah. it's Kentucky. To, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and luckily I have one. So the cider is. How did Jack Daniels die? Oh, God. Drowned. Old age, very healthy, very healthy, up until the age of about 95. Both wrong, so it's a draw. Um, he actually uh, died from blood poisoning after injuring his toe, kicking his safe in anger. <laughs> That's apparently true. It's on Wikipedia, so Fair it must be true. We wouldn't have got that if we didn't know it, would we? We no. wouldn't guess that. <laughs> so, your album, The Big D Freeze, um, how long was that in the making? It was about... I mean, the actual being in the studio, right, we, we wrote for about two months, wrote about 25 songs and then um, had a bit of a break in which we found the producer, about, so about six months after finishing writing, found the producer yeah. and uh, found the money to, to record the album and the studio and all the stuff that kind of, the admin of making a record. Yeah. Uh, and then we, we cut the record in about, um, Five or six weeks, like from start to finish. If I, uh, we had about it was about 28 days in the studio, like yeah. mixing and everything. So it was relatively quick. I mean, you can make records in a, a day, you can make them in a week. But some of the albums that we've made have taken a year and a half between recording. So it was nice to just do it in a yeah. in a moment in time. And you, you released that via Pledge Music, which a lot of bands are doing now. Uh, Mansions of the Moon have done it from America. Um, Little Comets who are playing tomorrow, they're releasing their next album. What do you think the, the pros are of doing this by a pledge music? Uh, I think the main, the main, the best side of it is really just interacting with your fans, you know, and it's getting, getting to know your fans and getting, kind of getting them involved in the process of yeah. making the record because they're, they're there from day one. They're from the journey, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Not to sound too cliche, but because uh, we, were, we were selling stuff like. Uh, going playing in people's living rooms and uh, selling kind of dr- drum skins that we used on the record, but you know, especially with the living room thing, we were going out and meeting people and you know, they were basically setting up parties and we were just going and joining in. <laughs> so you know, we had the best of both worlds with that. And it, it's had some good press actually. Uh, louderthanwar.com wrote, uh, You created a record which harbors universal appeal and perhaps more importantly, illustrates a band on the very top of the game. Um, another one from Drowned in Sound, the big D freeze is easily the pick of anything that, that the travelling band have put, uh, put on so far and proves that they're more than a great act to catch on stage. That must be nice to, to read. Yeah. Especially to come from me as well, you know, with soothing tones. <laughs> 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 Can you record a bit of that when I go to bed at yeah. night? <laughs> to send you to sleep. <laughs> but it must be nice to, to, you know, to get good reviews like that. It is. Um, Reviews are really only any good if they're good. Otherwise, they can be soul destroying. Adam tends not to read them, yeah. but I can't help reading them sometimes just because of uh, uh, the way information comes your way. It's like it's just there all the time yeah. as a tweet. But on the whole, the, the, right, the reviews have been really positive for the record, which is um, which is great. And I mean, you, you you don't like want the reviews to make you 
you, to feel good about yourself or to justify what you're doing. It's, it's, it's more that you know when there's a good review out there, yeah. it probably means that there's you know another few thousand people that might you know might look into the record and might check it out. So it's it's more about uh, spreading the word, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, now you've been together for a long time. What, what do you think of the current music scene in Manchester at the moment? I think that there's a lot of people listening to some pretty mediocre dance music um, and I think things like the Warehouse Project yep. have kind of sucked a bit of the choice and life out of the city. Um, it's been a bit of a struggle for the grassroots music scene uh, to stay afloat, but thankfully I think because there's some really wicked venues in Manchester yeah. um, and uh, some good promoters, independent promoters, uh, that the kind of, you know, indie music is still, you know, flying the flag here. Yeah. Uh, it's, the glory days aren't there anymore, but I think there's some, there's, some, there's always brilliant bands and always, um, like, always great songwriters coming out of Manchester. There's some, some top open mic nights now where you, you feel like there's a real community of singer-songwriters, whereas, Two years ago, I think it was a bit more disparate. Yeah, I think um, the heritage is there, isn't it? And it's like there's always going to be a, a band scene in Manchester and, and good stuff coming out of it because it's you go to other cities and sometimes and you find there's not that scene just doesn't quite exist and people are struggling yeah. to find places to play and there's you know put gigs on. Whereas in Manchester, there's never really been that problem. It's there's always you know people come from other cities to come and live here sure. for music, you know, yeah. and and I think that shows in the in the stuff that comes out of here as well. So if, if you were to say to an out of town and coming into Manchester, where would you say is a great place to go and catch live, unsigned acts at the moment? Um, well, it would, would be uh, stupid not to mention our own night. Cause it <laughs> <laughs> plug it, plug it, plug we, it. We, we put a night on at Odd Bar, upstairs at Odd Bar called Shut the Fire Cupboard, which um, we've been doing for about, um, along with our label night, Sideways Saloon, we've been doing nights for about... Uh, seven years now since we started the band really and the label um, so that's good we do that like one uh, every first and third Sunday yeah uh, and you get acts not only from Manchester but from um, all around the UK and we get bands from America and Canada come and wow. do it so yeah um, but then I'd say also the, the whiskey jar open yeah. mic on a Tuesday night is really really good um, uh, Joe McAdam, our buddy, has been running that for... They just had their first birthday, I think. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, we went last week, actually, with, yeah. with Anthony from the Whiskey Sessions. And How was that? Yeah. I Drunk? Think. Me? No, we, we all were. <laughs> uh, no, no, the, the whole... Uh, it was, there was a lot of whiskey that night, but... Um, yeah. There, yeah, there's some great... There's some great it's great uh, standard of, of music, yeah. Some yeah. great stuff on in there. So, we're coming to the end of 2014. What are the travelling band's dreams for 2015? I think we would like to uh, have some fresh, fresh music at some point, yeah. And, uh, and then just keep hammering the uh, the festivals. We're going to go to Europe and do some festivals nice. out there. Um, and we'll see if we can get a sponsorship with Compass Box after the we drunk the Pete Monster stuff the other night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd, that'd work. <laughs> I'm still I'm still working on becoming a professional footballer as well. <laughs> How's that going? It's all right. I think, um, you know, I'm just looking at the inspiration of some of the, you know, you know, people like Scotty Parker and stuff. Who Still going. Of, well, they got better. <laughs> they got better with age, really. So. Well, actually, I'm a Bolton Wanderers fan, and we might be re-signing Ida Good Johnson, who's 36. Is, yeah. So I'm Still excited. Playing, yeah. yeah. Still got a baby face, isn't he? Yeah. Like me. <laughs> <laughs>